You can find radio waves under the generate category, and this needs something to generate on top of. So I'm gonna go up to layer new solid and name this radio waves and make sure it's the size of my comp and then apply the radio waves effect to it. Right away, if I hit play, it's going to start generating these circles coming out from the center of my layer and expanding outwards. And that's the foundation of what this effect does. So I'm just gonna jump down to the color picker right here for the stroke and just select my yellow color up here so it fits the background a little better. And then we can walk through these controls a little bit. So first of all, we have a producer point, which is just right in the center of the layer, but it's a point control that I can move around wherever I want. And then the waves will generate from that point. I'll undo back to the center and zoom in nice and close. We'll skip over this property right here and look at render quality. It's set to four by default. And honestly, this looks totally fine. If I turn this down, you can see that it gets much more aliased, but I could increase that up to its max of 16 and it will get much cleaner. So four was the default, 16 is what I went to. It's not that noticeable unless you zoom in real close right here. This is four, that's 16, four, 16. Now this effect renders pretty quickly unless you're doing a ton of waves and even then it's not long at all. So I would always just increase that render quality up to 16. Next we have the wave type, which is set to polygon, but we can also base this on the alpha channel or any channel of another layer, as well as a custom mask. So we don't have to only have circles, but we'll get to those a little later. With this set to polygon, we have the polygon menu, which allows us to determine how many sides are on each wave. This is actually how it's making the circle. If I turn this down far enough, you can see that this is actually just made up of a bunch of straight lines from a polygon. So if I turn this down to five, we're gonna have a pentagon. I can go all the way down to three, so we're just using triangles now. The default was 64, which pretty much makes a perfect circle. It's very hard to see those straight edges at all, but I can actually increase this all the way up to 128. So if I do that, you can see that I get just even a smoother curve. So this will increase render times, but again, it's not much of a render hit. So if you're going for perfect circles, I would turn that all the way up. But let's say that you don't want it to be perfect circles. Let's go down to say six sides and then look at the next two properties, which are curve size and curviness. So if I turn up the curve size, this is kind of like the round corner shape layer operator. It rounds off those corners. And then curviness allows us to bring in or out those straight sections to be even more or less curvy. So maybe I don't want such a large curve, but I wanna adjust the curviness a little bit. You can do that really easily. Let me set those back down to zero. And the next checkbox is star. And this does just what it sounds like. It makes it a star. So if I make five sides, we're gonna get your regular star here, but we can control the star depth, which is the inner points basically. So again, just like a shape layer, I can control what that star looks like. And if you want these to be oriented differently, we can go down to the wave motion orientation and just rotate that back to wherever I need it. Okay, I'm gonna turn off star, turn the sides all the way up to 128, reset that orientation. And before we look at the other wave types, I'm just gonna close this up and we're gonna go into the wave motion section. First up, we have the frequency of the waves being released. So a higher number is going to give us more radio waves per second and a lower number will give us fewer. I'll set that back to one and expansion is basically how far each wave travels. So if I turn it way up high, the waves are gonna be traveling faster and cover more distance. If I turn that expansion way down low, then they won't travel nearly as fast and they'll die out before they go very far. We've already looked at the orientation, which doesn't really matter on a circle, but that allows you to rotate the waves if you were using a different wave type. And then we have the spin property. And to see this, we will need to turn the polygon sides down. So let me back that way down so we can see those sides very clearly. And then go to the spin property. If I increase this, you see that it's not just rotating everything all together. It's giving a rotation to each individual wave, but they all start at the same angle. So if I turn that spin value up, they will spin faster, but they always start at the same orientation when they're produced. Next up is lifespan, and this is measured in seconds, and it's set to 10 seconds. So I have to go pretty far into my comp before we see each one of these waves dying out. And you can see how they're just kind of fading out as well. We're gonna get to that in a second, but if I turn that lifespan down to say three seconds, then we're not gonna see them for nearly as long. And I'll probably wanna turn up my expansion so they travel out further, maybe even turn up my frequency. I'll turn those sides back up so we're back to a circle and reset the spin. But now we have a much higher frequency radio wave that fades out over its lifespan. I'm gonna skip over this reflection checkbox for a second and go into the stroke properties, 
because this is where we can determine the fade in and out times. It's currently set to a value of five. If I turn that value down, you can see that the fade out over the deaths of each wave is much tighter now. So they stay solid longer before fading out. I could turn that fade out time all the way down to zero and then they're just going to disappear as they reach their end of their lifespan. It depends on what you're going for, but I think at least a little bit of fade out time is nice. So I'm gonna leave it to a low value of 0.25, but we also have fade in time. So currently they're just popping on out of nowhere, which works since it's scaling from zero, but I could also have this fade in. So if I increase this a bit, it's going to fade in as it's growing out as well. I'll set that back down to zero. The other two controls we have for the birth and death of each wave is the start width and the end width. These are like the stroke thicknesses. So if I want these lines to start out thin and get thicker, then I'm gonna turn my end width up. So now these waves are starting out thinner and growing as they go out. Or I could do the opposite. Maybe I want a start width to be really thick and the end width to be really, really tiny, a minimum value of one. Then I'll play this back and now we have this really cool effect of the radio waves starting out thick but then thinning out and fading out at their death. Okay, now that we've kind of modified the way that these look, I'm gonna increase the expansion so they reach the edges of the comp and turn the frequency back down to one. Now I wanna check on this checkbox called reflection. When I do that, what's going to happen is the waves are going to hit the edges of the comp and then come back inwards. So let me turn the lifespan up another second so these waves travel further and you can see how it's reflecting off of the edges of the comp. Now this is all coming out of the center of the comp currently, but it doesn't have to. I could move this over to say the left edge and then play it back. And now the waves are gonna come out of that side and bounce off of the other edges. Or I can move it up to say this section of the comp and it will bounce off of wherever those waves are hitting the edges of the comp. This is a very cool effect and would be really great for illustrating how sound waves bounce off of walls. All right, I'm gonna turn off reflection for now, reset the producer point to be in the center, and then look at the profile. It's currently set to square. So if I zoom in close again on that stroke and open up that menu, we have a few other options. If I change it to triangle, what's gonna happen is it's going to fade linearly from the center outwards on either side of that stroke. I can't control the feather, but it at least gives me a soft edge. I can change that to sawtooth out, and then it's going to stay sharp on the inner side of the circle, but fade out from there. Or I could reverse that and say sawtooth in, I could change it to Gaussian, which is going to be softer than the triangle shape, or Bell, which will make it much more solid and fade out less on the edges, or Sine, which is a little bit softer on those edges. So this is the difference between Sine and Gaussian. If you want a more solid line but still feather out the edges, that's a good option for that. I'm gonna change that back to Square. And that's it for the stroke properties. Now I'm gonna jump all the way back up to the beginning here where we have this property called parameters are set at. It's currently set to birth. And again, this doesn't make much difference if the waves are perfectly circular. So I'm gonna decrease those sides again. So we have a polygon, then go back to the start of the comp, set a keyframe on the spin property, go forward maybe two seconds and then increase that spin property. So what's going to happen is the first wave is not going to have any spin, but each wave after that is going to have more and more spin until that two second frame. So actually let me turn the frequency up to say five, the expansion up and the lifespan down to two, and then I'll make the start width a little bit less. And then I'll just spread out these keyframes a little bit. So over the course of these four seconds, each wave is being spun more and more as time goes on. And that's because the parameters are set at birth, which means each wave is going to look at when it is born and take the spin value and any other parameter and apply that single value to it. This is not going to increase the spin of every wave over time, unless I change this from birth to each frame. And now that spin is going to affect each one of these waves identically. As the spin increases, all of the wave spin increases, even though they're all starting at the same orientation. That's why we're kind of getting this spiraling effect. But it makes a big difference as to how each one of them are spinning. The same thing goes for if I wanted to change the stroke color. So I'll set a keyframe on the color here, move forward, and let's say make it a tealish color. Now if I press U to bring up those keyframes, over time, each one of those waves is going to be colored differently but they're going to keep those colors over time. 
And let me make the end width a little bit thicker so we can really see that. And then maybe turn the fade out time all the way off. So we have the yellow waves at first, and then as more and more are birthed, they sample the color at that point in time until the colors stop changing. But if I were to change this from birth to each frame, then every wave is going to change its colors uniformly. They'll all be the same. All right, I'm gonna get rid of those spin keyframes, turn the spin down to zero, decrease the frequency to say two, and the expansion down a bit as well, and let's make this a nice circle again. And I wanna look at the velocity and direction properties. So I'll go back to the beginning, we can get rid of those color keyframes, and then increase this velocity property. As I'm doing that, you can see that the waves are now not traveling directly outwards from the center, they're moving in a direction. So the higher that velocity, the further they're going to travel from that origin point. And the direction property is the direction that they'll be shooting out. So again, if I go to the beginning, set a keyframe on direction, and then go forward about five seconds and increase this to 270, then over time, these waves are going to be shot out at different directions. I'm going to turn that fade out time up again, just so those fade out at the end. But again, this is a property that is affected by the parameters you're set at. So it's currently set to each frame, meaning that the waves are actually rotating in that direction over time. But if I set this at birth, then each wave will travel in a straight line based on the direction property when it was produced. So I'm gonna turn that frequency up to high value, say eight, and we get this really cool looking effect. And we could go really crazy if we turn on the reflection, then they're gonna start bouncing off the walls and we're just gonna create something much more complex and very unique looking. Okay, so that's how we control the wave's motion and what the stroke actually looks like, but what about the actual wave type? We haven't looked at that yet. So let me go back to the beginning, get rid of my keyframes and just reset the whole effect so we're back to this state. And I'm gonna change the wave type from polygon to image contours. What this is going to do is by default, look at the alpha channel of whatever layer you've applied it to. In this case, it's a solid. And so my waves are shaped based on that rectangle, that 1920 by 1080 rectangle. But this can be absolutely any shape. So if I were to grab my logo and bring it in here, and I can actually just turn it off. Then I'll go back to my radio waves effect and choose the source layer to be my logo. And now we're going to see part of my logo showing up as the radio waves. So it's the top part of my hair here, but you'll notice that it is missing some stuff like the holes inside the hair. And that's just a byproduct of how this effect is actually pulling the shape of the radio wave. The value channel is set to alpha, meaning it's looking at the alpha channel of that logo to determine the shape of the wave, but you could change that to any one of these channels. Alpha is what I wanna go with since my logo does have transparency. But now let's walk through the other controls. We have the source center, so I can shift this point around to choose where the center of the wave should be basically. So if we compare this to the actual logo, if I move it around, I can kind of center it up there so that it's moving towards the camera rather than off towards the top of the comp. And that is separate from the actual producer point. You see that if I move the producer point around, that's just moving all the waves together. Whereas moving the source center is actually changing kind of the perspective of those radio waves as they travel outwards. I'll set that back to its default. Then we have invert input. And if I check that on, then it's going to invert the alpha channel and it's looking now at the outside edges of the layer. So I don't need to do that. Next is the value threshold. So I'll zoom in so we can see the contours nice and clearly and turn that value threshold down as well as back up. Now, because my logo is just a vector solid logo with no blurs or gradients or any kind of softness, it's basically just solid pixels or completely transparent pixels, this doesn't do much. But it can be helpful if you have any kind of semi-transparent pixels within the source that you're using. Set that back down to its default. Next up is pre-blur. So you can see that there are some pointed edges and even some straight edges in here and no slider to determine how many sides there are like we did with a polygon. Well, if I increase the pre-blur a little bit, it's basically going to blur out the alpha channel so that we can smooth out some of that a little bit. Now, the higher I go with this, the less detail I'm going to have in the contour. So I'm really distorting the shape of my hair there. But if I turn that down to a very low value of maybe five, that is going to improve some of those jagged edges. I'll reset that back down to zero. Next up is tolerance. So if I decrease this value, then we are basically adding more sides to the contours. This will take longer to render, but it might be worth it for what you're doing. 
By turn tolerance up, this is basically going to allow the effect to simplify the alpha channel more and more, and you're gonna get a lot more of these straight edges, but it will render more quickly. All right, I'm gonna set that back down to its default. And finally, we have contour. This is where we select what part of the source layer is actually shaping the wave. So I could change this value from one to two, and it's going to pick the next part of my logo that it finds and shape the wave on that. So I can cycle through all these different parts of my logo just by changing the contour value. So it looks like there are nine individual elements. Now, if I wanted to do my entire logo, it would take a little bit of time, but I'd basically need to duplicate this layer and then change the contour to a different value. So let's go to say the hair, and I'll back this up so that I can see it a little bit more clearly, and then duplicate it again, change the contour, but you'll notice they're not exactly lining up where they need to be. So I kind of need to mess with the source center, but that does change the scale. So honestly, this is not a very realistic use of radio waves because you have so many duplicates of the effect and getting everything to line up perfectly is not likely. So I'll go ahead and get rid of those other duplicates. And then we'll jump back up to the wave type because there's another option called mask. So I'm gonna change that to mask. We no longer have any waves coming out, but if I grab my pen tool and just draw a custom shape right on top of this layer and then choose that mask as my mask source, now my radio waves are going to be shaped based on that path and everything else behaves exactly the same way. So if I turn up my expansion, I turn on reflection, it's going to bounce off and react to the shape that I drew and all the other controls work exactly the same. So again, I could change my color to match my yellow color here. I could start the stroke much thicker, maybe turn down the frequency so there aren't so many, increase the expansion, and come up with something completely unique. But those are all of the controls for radio waves. It's a very powerful effect worth knowing about. You should definitely play around with it. It's definitely shown up in my workflow over the years, but that's everything you need to know about radio waves. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.